With the guns of Afghanistan all but silent for the first time in decades, those with deep roots here can finally come home. Afghan-American Nadia Tarzi heads an association dedicated to preserving Afghan antiquities. She also raises funds to support the work of her father, a world-renowned archaeologist. Nadia grew up in Europe, where she dreamed of this moment, the first time she would ever set foot in Afghanistan, a homeland she's never known. I've been waiting since I am 13 to come here. Golmamad is this loyal friend of the family for over 40 years. To finally meet him, it's very emotional. Because we've been longing to meet each other. I just feel like I'm coming home. I'm finally here, but what's really hard is that I'm, I'm late. I missed out on knowing Afghanistan as beautiful as it was then. Nadia can't linger in Kabul. Her destination is some 150 miles to the west. There, in the Bamayan Valley, Nadia's father, Dr. Samaryalai Tarzi, is searching for a treasure of monumental importance for Afghanistan. For the first time, Nadia will take part in one of her father's excavations. The two haven't seen each other in more than a year. But between them lie ten hours of bad roads and relics of the wars that kept Nadia from coming to Afghanistan until now. It's far more than what I expected and, and anticipated. It's more beautiful, it's more powerful. The people are even nicer than I could have imagined. It's a moment I've been waiting for my whole life, I think. That's my dad. But not spoken yet. Yeah, you want that one? It's incredible. I've always looked at it. I've taken photos. I've taken 350 photos. The Tarzis reunion takes place in what has been called the world's most beautiful valley, Bamiyan. Here, nestled into the Hindu Kush mountain range, a three-mile-long cliff dramatically soars 400 feet above the valley floor. It is dominated by the hundreds of Buddhist caves that were occupied by some 5,000 monks in Bamayan's heyday. As Buddhism spread from India to China, it put down roots here and adorned this valley with monuments of faith. Once, two of the world's largest statues of Buddha earned Bamiyan the nickname Valley of the Gods. Then, in March 2001, the serene giants that had watched over Bamiyan for some 1,500 years fell. blown up by Afghanistan's Taliban government. I was wearing my slippers in the living room, watching the news. When I saw it, I threw one of my slippers at the television. I didn't want to watch. I screamed. This chapter will always be underlined in the history of Afghanistan. Future generations will know what they did. People need to know that at the beginning of the 21st century, savages came into Afghanistan to destroy its heritage. 
Probably better than anyone in the world, Dr. Tarzi knew Bamiyan's giant Buddhas. In the 1970s, he directed their first and only structural restoration. War drove him to France and barred his return until it was too late to save them. It was as if a part of me stayed in Bamiyan while I was away. When you are studying an object, whether it be a small object or colossal monument, you consider it to be your personal belonging. It becomes your Buddha, your child, your loved one. So between me, small and humble professor, and this big Buddha, there was a connection, an osmosis, this feeling was destroyed by the stupidity of man. I thought I'd turn the page on that moment in history, but... Since then I've fought. Dr. Tarzi rarely visits the empty niches of the two giant Buddhas. But in the face of such profound pain, he didn't retreat. Instead, he hatched an audacious plan. Tarzi knew what the Taliban did not. In the rubble of the two destroyed Buddhas, there may be a third giant statue that ancient texts claim is a thousand feet long. Called the Sleeping Buddha of Bamiyan, it would be one of the largest statues ever created, fully as long as the Eiffel Tower. Dr. Tarzi intends to find it. Since the destruction of the Bamiyan Buddha by the Taliban, the people of Bamiyan and Afghanistan have been searching for a way to avenge what the Taliban did. If I find it, I will offer up the thousand-foot Buddha as a response to the Taliban by the people of Bamiyan and Afghanistan. Discovering the sleeping Buddha would be sweet justice indeed the best possible gift Dr. Tarzi could give his homeland. Still, its last recorded sighting was more than a thousand years ago. Has the sleeping Buddha truly survived Afghanistan's tumultuous history? And in the vastness of Bamiyan Valley, how does he even know where to look? On a busy thoroughfare in Kabul, another giant of archaeology is also looking for the past. And for Russian archaeologist Viktor Sarianidi, seeing ruined Kabul for the first time in more than two decades is bittersweet. Already he confronts memories of a younger self in a gentler era. On my way from the airport, I was looking around and there was nothing I could see that was familiar to me. That almost made me cry. Dr. Sarianidi has been invited back to Kabul because the treasure that brought him fame may have returned from oblivion. Called the Bactrian Hoard, it is a collection of some 20,000 gold burial objects forged in the first century AD. In the 1980s, it vanished melted down by warlords, it was rumored, or given as tribute to terrorist leader Osama bin Laden. Now, a treasure said to be the hoard has been